Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It's time to go through the watch pile, the never-ending watch pile, the ever-growing watch pile, uh, and you'll understand that why when we get through this. It's been another bumper month for movies. Ooh. So uh, let's dive into everything I picked up this month. So first up from Severin, we got Nightmares and a Damaged Brain on 4K, which I've already reviewed. Uh, same with Bad Biology, which I, again, really enjoyed these. First couple of 4K Severin releases for the UK. Uh, my friend, uh, those were screeners as well. Uh, my friend Paige sent me Rawhead Rex, which was really good in 4K. Uh, I enjoyed checking this one out a, a great deal. It's one of those ones where it's a kind of comfort watch. I enjoy sitting down. I have a great deal of affection for it. It's never a great movie, but I'll go back to it often. And then we have the uh, some radiance titles. So we've got uh, Alonso Fan, which was surprisingly good. Uh, Black Tight Killers, which I really loved this one. Um, then we've got some Eureka titles here. So one that I am just about to start watching is Bodyguard Kiba, one and two. Hopefully that's pretty decent. Uh, Yakuza Wolf 1 and 2. The, the first one was tremendous on this. The second one was fine. Not as good. Um, but definitely worth checking out the first one. It's worth getting to the first one. Uh, then we've got Paths of Doug... Paths of Glory on 4K. Almost said Paths of Douglas. <laughs> uh, yeah, too much going on in my head. Busy day. Which was great. It's the first time I've actually got around to checking this one out, and checking it out on 4K was remarkably terrific. Um, I enjoyed it a hell of a lot. I can see me going back to watch it again and again. Kurt Douglas was terrific. In it. And then from Second Sight Films, we had Inside, which was uh, really interesting. I, I kind of liked the idea behind it. I love the setup. It gets really like, bloody and terrific later on. It was. Uh, icky uh, and fun in all the right ways. Now, uh, I think I showed most of these titles when my friend uh, Philip sent them to me. We'll run through them quickly again. We've got the Conan Chronicles, which I've still to get into. I've still to get into all of these, actually. Uh, I've been working on Backlog. Uh, Clear Cut, which everyone seems to be raving about, which is something I'm really interested in checking out. The Prime Time Panic 2 set, The Death of Richie. Incident at Cressridge and the Seduction of Gina. I loved Primetime Panic 1 and I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Candice Bergen and T.R. Baskin, which and City Editions, I, you know, they're always pretty great. I did miss out on Hoffman uh, when it was in the last indicator sale, but my friend picked it up for me. He's a good man, Phil. And then the Femme Fatale set from uh, Fun City Edition as well which has two films in it, Niche and The Bitch. And they've just announced a three-pack kind of French giallo set that looks amazing. Uh, and then we have Partigal from Fun City Editions as well. And last from Joe, uh, Train Spotting on 4K. I love this film. It's just one of those utter ad adoration towards it. Uh, it looked terrific in 4K, I felt. I just loved revisiting it again. It's one of those movies where I just know every line. Uh, I'm so comfortable watching it, and it's such a terrific film. I have done a review on Train Spotting, but it was one of those ones where I didn't. I don't like talking about films that I just utterly love because I feel like I'm not giving them enough service. But this was about a seven minute review. I did absolutely no editing to it whatsoever. I didn't cut out any of the ums or ahs. I didn't insert any clips. And I, I uploaded it to the channel. And I just, I don't really put out reviews as raw as that. And I'm still in two minds about doing it. But let me know if you'd rather have one with all the clips and little bits added. Or would you just like to see a, a raw video uh, with no editing whatsoever? As I mentioned on the last watch list pile, I picked up the Inspector Weir Scripts when it was on the uh, sale that 88 Films had on Amazon and I logged into my 88 Films account a while ago and to discover I had some good amount of um, points built up there so I 
quickly spent them and I picked up Evil Dead Trap 1 and Evil Dead Trap 2. Now I had uh, £25 in points, so with the postage and packaging, it cost me uh, roughly seven quid to get the two of these movies, which I was going to get anyway. They just look terrific. My kind of thing. I'm going to get to them pretty soon. One that I wanted and I missed out on last year from 88 Films again, I picked up was Long Arm, Arm of the Law Parts 1 and 2. Um, I've heard great things about them and it dropped to a really good price in the sale, so I was eager to pick it up. And as if that wasn't enough, there was one kind of like last panic buy before the sale finished. I asked you guys whether I should pick it up or not. You were like, yeah, I think you'll like it. It's like a, a dead heat kind of movie. The Blue Jean Monster. And it was uh, £12, I think, so I picked it up. And then there was the Vinegar Syndrome. Cups this month where, uh, you know, there wasn't many. I picked up Bubble Bath because Death Crocodile. Um, and uh, their animated movies are always interesting. So you know, it's a no-brainer to get that. I picked up Five Card Stud, which is Dean Martin and Robert Mitchum, which I've watched. It, it kind of has horror leanings. It undercuts it with the score. A great cast. Uh, Yafet Koto in this one as well. Some other familiar faces. It was interesting. Not great. Interesting. Uh, I picked up Phase 4 and 4K as part of the subscription package. Love that movie. And every time I watch it, I tend to love it more than I previously did. And is one that I would uh, strongly recommend checking out. It's such a weird oddity. Uh, the VSA, which I've still to get through from this month, is A Man Called Hero. Uh, which sounds bonkers. I will get to it. Uh, the Playgirls and the Vampire was one I was eager to check out. Uh, and it was a shame that it was kind of boring. <laughs> you know, it didn't offer much at all, which was a real shame because I, I wanted to love it. Uh, I loved the, the, the city black and white photography couple of the characters, but it was so familiar and didn't offer much in the form of surprises and just kind of let me down more than anything. And, and finally, I picked up the Spanish Bloodbath set. Three films, Night of the Skull, Violent Bloodbath and The Fish with the Eyes of Gold. This was a terrific set. I loved it. I really did. Um, I will rave about this one. If you are a fan of Giallis or Gialli movies, this very much felt like a kind of forgotten jelly set. I could highly recommend checking this one out. Absolutely loved it. Terrific. And the back cover is like that. Uh, three very different movies as well, which I, I loved. Um, yeah. I can't recommend them highly enough. So that's everything I got this month, which was 35 movies all in. And this was a bit of an inconsistent month of movie watching, I would say. Let's have a look at it. So, first up in February, I just dove into the Sydney Lumet box set, which I really wanted to watch. So, I watched The Pawn Broker, uh, loved it. I watched The Group, which was surprisingly uh, engaging. I enjoyed that more than I thought I was going to, which was unusual. Inside, which was again a great surprise, just fun, bloody, surprising, really quick watch. I would recommend that if you're into the French New Extreme. The Deadly Affair, I really enjoyed from the Sydney Limit box. Uh, a lot of fun with that one. Child's Play from the Sydney Limit box as well was a little bit of a letdown. Um, I could see what it was trying, trying to go kind of horror, but not fully embracing it. So it didn't quite work entirely for me. Uh, the Offence and Serpico I'd seen before, I love them. Five star movies all day long. I took a cinema trip to see Argyle. Look at that day. Child's Play, The Offence, Serpico, and then Argyle. Argyle was a bit of a mess. I wanted to love it. I just, it's not going to happen. I watched the X-Files movie for a, a podcast I was doing. And yeah, really great. Alligator 2, The Mutation. I, I had never seen this. I wanted to see it. I've seen it. I can, you know, tick. Check that off the list. I'm not going to watch that again. 
uh, Paths of Glory, the 4K Eureka release was pretty great. Uh, Beatrice was from the Villages of the Damned set. And I've still got one more movie to watch in that. Um, it was a really kind of interesting one. I'll go into that more when I do the review for it. Uh, Slaughter in San Francisco, the review is on the channel. This was a Eureka Classics title with uh, Chuck Norris as the bad guy. It was fun, kind of forgettable. I rewatched Alligator in 4K from the 101 set, which was terrific. As I mentioned, Yakuza Wolf 1 was terrific. What an absolutely fantastic movie. Bleak, dark, violent, uh, well worth picking up and checking out. June was back in the cinema. I wanted to see that before the second one again. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I'm a big fan of the June books um, and I felt they're a great adaptation of that. Yakuza Wolf 2, extend my condolences, was fine. It went a more comedic route um, and it didn't have as much of an impact as the first one did. Black Tight Killers was a whole lot of fun. Uh, a kind of pastiche of spy movies in the 60s. Definitely had its tongue in its cheek. Very colourful, very out there, very reminiscent of Seijun Suzuki. And yeah, a whole lot of fun. A Lonesome Fan was another one that I enjoyed uh, a good amount. It was very different to what I expected, kind of like a black comedy. Uh, some surreal moments and made me interested to check out more of the Tavani stuff. I started the Forgotten Jali Volume 6 set with Death Carries a Cane. Uh, now, if you want a giallo that kind of has all the tropes you would expect, Death Carries a Cane is definitely that. But it doesn't get bogged down in those tropes either. It's got a good story to tell. It's engaging. It's fun. It dives straight into the story. Well worth checking out. Train spotting. I watched again on 4K. Love it. Can't get enough of it. Bad Biology, I really enjoyed. I can see people hating that one. I had a good bit of fun with it. Nightmare, or Nightmares in a Damaged Brain, was pretty great. Um, like I said, it's, it's a good, solid film. I like it. I just don't love it. I don't know if I'll ever get there. Um, I feel it does what it does very well. The Young, the Evil, and the Savage it was the second film in the uh, Forgotten Jali set, uh, otherwise known as Naked You Die, which was great. I loved this one. A, a, a movie from the 60s that embraced all those kind of uh, costumes and, and items of the time, the language. This school for girls was pretty terrific setting and it felt like an almost kind of live Scooby-Doo colourful giallo where there's no real blood in it or that, but it was still fun. I watched Death Carries a Cane again because I didn't feel I gave it my fullest attention when I first watched it and I just wanted to revisit it before I did the review. The Bloodstained Shadow rounded out the Forgotten Jelly set and was wonderful. That is one of the best Forgotten Jelly sets out there. Highly recommended. I watched the 4K disc and the American version of The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock, which was... It was a kind of butchered version. It never quite tied together and there was some serious inconsistencies. I was glad I had watched the original Italian cut first because that one was not the greatest version. Sitting at night one night, didn't want to watch anything I, I hadn't seen. It was uh, relaxing with the family. We stuck on Kong Skull Island. I really enjoy it. It's fun. It's out there. It's wacky. Black Cat 2, uh, part of the VSA range, was... Uh, it was good, um, and I like the fact that they really went in a different angle from the first movie, but sidelining our main character, completely wiping her memory and taking away any remnants of what she was, was a huge mistake. I didn't like that at all. Southern Comfort is terrific. I love it. I've got a lot to say on it, and I'll cover that in the review. Uh, next up, we have Creepshow, which I have in 4K. It's the best anthology movie out there, I think. Um, nothing comes close to it. Everything about it is just not perfect. The stories are fantastic. Uh, I could sit and watch that and repeat. Rawhead Rex, like I said, it's a kind of comfort watch, one that I've been through a few times. Um, 
yeah, it's it's not great, but there's something really kind of fun about it. And Tet, which I've got a review for soon, was bonkers. Indonesian horror movie. Uh, it's translated as Black Magic, the title. It was so much fun. It really was. Uh, watch out for a review of that coming soon. Minefield starred Michael Ironside. Uh, it was a Canadian thriller. LSD kind of um, you know, the amnesic killers like the Manchurian Candidate type of idea about it. It was fun and, and fine. Nothing special but it killed a 90 minutes. And then Black Magic 2 or Santet 2 Female Tigers was just almost as fun as the first one. Again, check out the review of that coming soon. So, all in all, I started off my list, I've got my notes down here, uh, with 236 movies to watch. 37 got added to the pile, uh, and I managed to watch 29 of them, which left me with a total of 244. Now, I got some I got a big pile of movies from my friend Philip again, which was about 12 movies, um, a whole bunch of screeners and some last minute uh, sale purchases. So I'm not intending on really increasing this pile much at all in March. I, I don't want to. Uh, let's have a quick look at what is coming out. So through there, there's nothing near I'm picking up. Uh, the Inspector Rear Skirts 2. Uh, like, no rush for that. I need to watch the first one. I'll probably wait and pick it up in a sale later on down the line. March the 18th, we've got a few. Uh, we've got Green Room 4K and Possessor uh, 4K, which I will be checking out. Bodyguard Kiba, I already have at the moment to check out. And then at the end of the month, I would like to pick up Witchfire Finder General and Blood and Satan's Claw. It's probably not going to happen, and I'll probably wait to they're on a sale further down the line. Tony Arzenta, a story written with water, and the Bounty Hunter trilogy. Um, well, they are here already, so I will be reviewing them at some point. The Flesh and Blood Show, which I ordered, I ordered on HMV six months ago or something like that. Um, that will probably land at some point. The Swordsman of All Swordsmen, uh, I will be picking that up. Pip Dracula, I would like to see, but again, I'm happy to wait on that one. Indicator titles, I'm not picking up any of those. Um, yeah, and is that that's it. So I think I've already got many of the titles that I'm going to get this month. Maybe three or four more to add to it. I don't plan on picking up any more than that. I want to really get the list down this month, which is hopefully going to happen. Who knows? We shall see soon enough whether I can live up to that or not. It's been another busy month of movie watching. I've had a lot of work things on. March is heavy for work as well, so I will try and watch as many as I can and definitely try and cut down on picking up because I need to fill the, the, the watch list a good chunk. If I could get down to the very low 200s this month, I will be over the moon with that. Uh, I think that would be fantastic and try and move April into under 200. That's the plan. Whether it will happen or not, I don't know. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts on any of the titles that I've picked up, um, any of the ones I plan to pick up, what do you plan to pick up in March, and just any thoughts in general. Drop it down in the comment box below, and we can have a little chit-chat about my ever-growing watch list that never seems to get any smaller and always seems to get bigger. As always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff. In the description box below are links to Patreon, Membership Programme and manvfilm.com, always in which you can support me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.